Good morning. I'm glad you're with us today. Uh, we're going to be working with Matthew chapter 13. And just as a preface to this, things may be a little different today. Grace explained to me a few moments ago that I need to have more expression in my face and maybe attend clown school. I'm not sure what that means, but that, that's what she said. So we're working today with what it is to be part of the kingdom of heaven. Too often people think of heaven as the reward in the afterlife. Well, that's not exactly what Jesus was talking about. So the best way to understand this is certainly from the eyes of a child. My favorite part of worship on Sunday mornings is always the children's time. And you never know what's going to happen. The first year I was here, I had all the children sitting around me. I was sitting there at the pew or at the uh, chancel rail. Mm -hmm. And my goal was to simply explain to them how excited I was to go to the grocery store to get some ice cream. And I sat them down and what I was going to do is talk about how much more exciting heaven would be. And I sat all the kids down and I said, I went to the grocery store yesterday. What do you think is my favorite aisle? And one little boy who will remain nameless because his mother almost had a heart attack, he yelled out, the beer aisle. And the congregation burst into laughter. He didn't know that he had said something funny. And I lost complete track of everything I was thinking about doing and saying. And so we quickly wrapped up the children's time. I gave all the children two Tootsie Rolls and they were to go out and he went back to his mother. And as he was walking towards his mother again, she looked like she just had a stroke. And he said, and I heard him say this, I should have said the wine aisle. And everybody there burst into laughter. Now, in looking at what Jesus thought about children, this is what he says. Let the little children come to me and do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. First, we have to become children. But what exactly does that mean? It doesn't mean being naive. It doesn't mean being immature. It means simply accepting this new magnificent relationship that we have with God, which again is not restricted for the afterlife. It begins the minute we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. Now, in the scripture passage that we're looking at this morning, Jesus is in a house. He's teaching the disciples what it is to be part of the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to start with Matthew chapter 13, starting with the 44th verse. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that is thrown into the sea and fish every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good ones in baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then Jesus says these words. Have you understood all this? There are times when we need an explanation. There are times when we actually need help understanding exactly exactly what is going on because a misunderstanding can actually have detrimental consequences there's the story of two hunters walking in a field and suddenly one of them just kills over he's not breathing his eyes have rolled back into his head and the other hunter quickly whipped out his phone and dialed 911 and the operator came on and he said my friend is dead what do i do and the operator said sir calm down first Make sure your friend is actually dead. The phone went silent, and then uh, the operator heard a single gunshot. And then the hunter said, okay, he's dead. What next? Now, he didn't understand what she meant was 
check to see if he's dead. Instead, he made sure he was dead. It's kind of like that in understanding heaven. Believe it or not, people need help because too many think in terms of heaven as just some sort of reward that we're given in the afterlife. But you see, it's about a rel deep personal relationship with God that doesn't start the moment we die. It permeates every aspect of our lives from the moment we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. So to be part of the kingdom of heaven is to know that God is a very proactive presence in our lives right now. That God loves us more than anything. That God created us for a legitimate holy purpose. That we have reason for being that is beyond us. And it also, to be part of the name of heaven, is to know exactly who we are and whose we are. And it begins, as I said, the moment we accept Jesus, Lord and Savior. Everything changes. Now, just before the Bible study started, I said to Grace, this is the day when we're going to be able to make you a Christian. And she said, does that mean the sky is going to open up and a dove is going to come down? And again, that's kind of what people think about heaven. But remember, that's not it. It's about our relationship with God. And it begins in this life, not the moment we die. One of the most powerful movies I have ever seen is a true story. The movie is entitled Antoine Fisher, and it is very much worth your time. It's the story of a man who, as a baby, was deserted by his mother. He spent his life in foster homes, in reform school, he was abused. Every day was a day of pain and degradation for him. And at 18 years old, he joins the Navy. But this is now a young man filled with rage. And he gets into one fight after another, after another. And he is ordered to see a psychiatrist played by Denzel Washington. And working with a psychiatrist, he is encouraged to try and find his family, to go back to his roots and maybe there that will facilitate healing. Antoine Fisher does track down an aunt and uncle in Cleveland, and he calls them, and then he goes to Cleveland. And the uncle is taking Antoine to an old, dilapidated apartment. And there, a very withered looking, angry woman answers the door. She soon realizes that man standing before her was the baby that she gave up birth or deserted and she turns around and she walks into the living room and sits on this very worn filthy couch and just stares straight ahead and has all these questions why did you do this to me why didn't you come save me one question after another after another she never responds, she just looks straight ahead and tears stream down her face. Antoine is getting no answers, no feedback whatsoever. And he stands up and he walks over to her and bends down and he gives her a kiss on the cheek. And then he walks out of the apartment back to his uncle's car. And by this point, he is truly a crushed man, no answers, no prospect for hope. His life is over. And the uncle drives him back to the uncle and aunt's house. And as Antoine walks into this house, again, he is despondent. Life could not get any worse. And the moment he walks through the door, there is this huge chorus of over 50 family members that he had never met before, aunts and uncles and couples and children holding up signs saying Antoine with smiley faces and rainbows on them. All these people laughing, shaking his hand, giving him hugs, slapping him on the back. And then he goes into the kitchen. And there the table is filled with every sort of food you can imagine. Chicken, mashed potatoes, fruit salad, pancakes, everything. 
and the room is decorated for a huge party. Sitting at one end of the table is the oldest person there, a very elderly woman, and she knocks on the table to get Antoine's attention. And he sees her, and he walks towards her. And in very slow, deliberate ways, she reaches up and she takes his hand, and then she caresses his face. In a very raspy, gravelly voice, she says, Welcome. And Antoine knows for the first time in his life, he is home. Someday, you will close your eyes in this world and you will open them in the next. And at that moment, Jesus will caress your face and say, welcome. And that will be a good day. But heaven is not just in the afterlife. What Jesus is explaining to the disciples is that the prospect of where we're going the fact that we know for sure that through his death and resurrection we are saved. We become different people. In Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, he says these words. For once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of the light. You're going to go to heaven. God has made that possible. Heaven begins the moment you accept Jesus. That's what he taught the disciples. And when he says, do you understand? Our response is yes. I pray that you have a blessed day. Thank you so much for being with us. Bye-bye.